Hello there everybody, so Butter9 Hammer, and welcome back to Danganronpa V3 Killing Harmony. Now then, we are now about to embark on Chapter 3's Class Trial, because Mentally Unstable Angie and Tenko are dead. And I have no fucking clue who the hell the possible culprits could be. Because from what I understand, there's either one culprit, or there's two culprits. Also, I changed up the amount of skills that I've got equipped at the moment, which, actually, now that I notice, I've still got about a good 12 points that I can equip. I've obviously increased my, um, focus and my influence and my focuser up. I've also equipped a couple of the skills that I got, like the X, the triple X-ray goggles, which... Give me a second. Those... Once part of an object becomes visible, the entire object will be shown, which will be helpful during the imagination excavation. Uh, mm. The tension gauge will increase at a faster rate, effective during argument armament. I mean, that could be helpful, I think. Moves the time penalty for breaking a non-erasable piece. Yeah, I think that'll be very useful. Yeah, why not? Makes it easier to push the opponent back during a blade lock. I think that'll help, too. I need whatever, you know, help I can get. The entire screen will light up more frequently. Uh, yes. Okay, it looks like we are now set up with the amount of skills that we are going to use this time. So. Oh boy. Let's do this. Ugh. with the basic explanation of the class trial. During the trial, you'll present your arguments for who the culprit is and vote for who done it. We are fully aware of the rules, Monokuma. Vote correctly and only the blackened will be punished. But if you pick the wrong person, I'll punish everyone besides the blackened and that person will graduate from this academy. Also, refusing to vote will result in your death. So you better vote for someone. Ugh, all right. Now, smiles, everyone. It's showtime. Let's get this crazy awesome trial underway. And discover which of the monocubs will die this time, Monotaro or Monophony. Because I'm pretty sure Monodam is the one that's the one that's killing them. So I'm going to make my prediction right now. Monotaro. Sorry, everyone. I don't think I'm gonna be much help this time. Because of Monokuma's disruptions, I couldn't do a thorough investigation. I can tell Monokuma is overcompensating to hide his self-consciousness. Indeed. Next time, spend less time fixing your hair and more time investigating, spaceman! <laughs> Shut up! I don't need to hear some comedy act from you two weirdos. Who did it? Who killed Angie and Tenko? Uh-oh. Do not let your emotions hasten your judgment. There may be two killers. That is correct. So, our other culprit might not be one of us here. Samugi, you okay? Hmm? What do you mean? The transfer student. Okay, she's officially lost her mind. Maybe our resurrected transfer student dragged Angie and Tenko into the grave. Uh, n no, S Samugi, no. Stop it! Stop making stuff up! Yeah, seriously, you're gonna you're gonna break Kaito again. Say something, Shuichi. It'll be a mess if this keeps going on. Whatever you say, lady. Is it even possible for a revived corpse to be the culprit? Well, in the interest of being thorough, I should clear things up here. Okay. Non-stop debate! This crime was committed by the recently deceased. They came back to life and killed two of our classmates! No! <laughs> so, ritual did work? Who was resurrected, I wonder? Angie did say she was gonna bring Rantaro back. Yes. Rantaro 
was resurrected. The culprit is the late Rantaro Amami! No. Please, stop it! <laughs> I'm sorry, Kaito. I don't mean to laugh, but God. Okay, okay. This isn't about believing in reviving the dead. I have to focus on their statements. Hmm. Are all those statements correct? This crime was committed by the recently deceased. They came back to life and killed two of our classmates. No! <laughs> so, ritual did work? No, it didn't. Who was resurrected, I wonder? Angie did say she was going to bring Rantaro back. Yes. Rantaro was resurrected. The culprit is the late Rantaro Amami! Please, stop it! <laughs> okay, okay, I need to look at some of this stuff. Okay. Um, well, right off the bat, I think Gontas needs to be countered because, obviously, if they were alive, they would be with us at the moment, wouldn't they? Let's see. Ritual, preparing to deal with the dead soul, just contact them. Oh, it's literally just got all the steps on here. Okay. Huh. I think I have to counter Gonta's statement. This crime was committed by the recently deceased. I think. They came back to life and killed two of our classmates. Eh. No! <laughs> so, oh. Yeah. Got it. That's wrong. Well, I didn't get the V counter, but. Well. You know, I tried. I don't think Angie's ritual succeeded. According to the Necronomicon Monokuma showed us, you have to burn the Necronomicon in the ritual. And the Necronomicon was, you know, still there. After preparing the effigy, burn this Necronomicon to ashes. Use caution, be mindful of carbon monoxide poisoning. Sprinkle the ashes on the effigy, and repeat the name of the deceased three times. If Angie's ritual had succeeded, the book would have been gone. So she must have been killed before the ritual was complete, since the book was still intact. I gotta like- I, I like you're a hoagie, Kibo. Then, going to think Rantaro probably not culprit. Oh, I guess you're right. Well, you changed your mind quickly. Well, duh. There's no way a dead person could resurrect. Now, hold on a second. I can't let that comment stand. Uh-oh. Sure, everybody knows that you can't bring the dead back to life. But it's easy at the Ultimate Academy, as long as you use the Necronomicon. What are you talking about? There's no way that's possible. Notice how I'm making the screen shake. But it's true. I never lie about motives. And that would only be possible if it was a game. Daddy said so, so he can't be wrong. Raising the dead is totally possible. By raising the dead, you mean picking up their corpse and slightly elevating them off the ground? That counts as raising. Man, I can't believe you guys wasted such a perfectly good motive. You should have let me use it to bring Monogam back to life. What? Monogam is still alive, though. Right now. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I wouldn't waste the resurrection on Monogam's corpse. Okay, you're gonna die. I'm going to kill you. Oh? So resurrecting the dead was actually possible this whole time? And she's backed into that mode. There's no way it's possible! There's no way that could happen, idiots. Monokuma is trying to confuse us. Let's hurry up and find out who the Blackened is. If our transfer student isn't the culprit, then blame falls to one of us. Correct. Who? Who did it? Step aside, Half Pint! I'll handle this! Okay! I don't know about Tenko, but I'm pretty fucking sure Keo murdered Angie! What? What? That's a hell of an accusation to throw. What makes you think that? What? Why? Don't play dumb with me, creep show. I already know what happened. Okay. Would you elaborate for me, please?
Art Lab's front door, Art Lab's back door, Kokuji's lock. Used a katana to kill Angie. What was that fourth one? And it was found in Kyo's research lab. What was that one again? Angie had locked herself in the Ultimate RS lab since yesterday, working on the ritual. She would not unlock the door unless someone from the Student Council asked her to. The Student Council members were Gonta, Kibo, Himiko, Tenko, and Sumuki. Okay. Which makes you, Kyo, automatically suspicious. But anyone could have taken that katana, you see. Not really. So that rusty katana was the murder weapon. You were the only one who cared about that thing, Kyo. I did not care about some katana. Just admit it, you yeah, shit-eating just... worm. <laughs> Freaking making it look like a worm? What the fuck? And murdered the fuck out of Angie! Yeah, I'm a fucking genius! Okay, I gotta admit, I really do like how even the text sort of has personality in a way. I like that. That's pretty neat. Is Kurakio really the culprit? Does that story fit the facts of the case? We should think about it from the beginning. The culprit used a katana to kill Angie. And it was found in Kyo's research lab. Well, we know that. Which makes you, Kyo, automatically suspicious. But anyone could have taken that katana, you see. So that rusty katana was the murder weapon. You were the only one who cared about that thing, Kyo. I did not care about some katana. Just admit it, you shit-eating worm. <laughs> Went to the classroom, broke in. Well, you can't really break in because the. the fuck out of Angie. You can't really break oh, in because. Yeah, I'm a fucking genius. Okay, you can't really break in because both doors were locked if she was in there by herself, and I think it was already stated. I think yeah, according to some movies account, she would only open the door to somebody who was part of the student council. Hmm. So I don't think the break in the, the breaking in statement's gonna work. I'll try that using Samuga's the account. Used a katana to kill Angie. Well, I'll try to. Research lab, which makes you Kyo automatically suspicious. But anyone could have taken that katana, you see. So that rusty katana. <laughs> you were the only one who cared about that thing, Kyo. Not care about some katana. <laughs> Just admit it, you shit-eating worm. You went to the classroom, bro. Mm -hmm. Damn it, missed. That's wrong. Well, at least I got it right. Okay, okay. So far, so good. Okay. No, Kyo would not have been able to enter Angie's lab. Isn't that right, Tsumugi? Yeah. Before Angie locked herself up in her research lab. She said she wasn't going to open up for anyone but student council members. Okay, my line of thinking was correct. And Kyo is not a member. She wouldn't have opened the door for him. Well, to be fair, he could have easily lied and, you know, made him, made her think that he was... No, that wouldn't work. Kyo couldn't have killed Angie even if he wanted to. I had no desire to kill her in the first place. So whoever killed Angie must have been one of the student council members, yeah? Well... I mean, Kaito, you're not wrong in your thinking, but I kind of want to keep open the possibility that, I don't know, the killer, if they weren't part of the student council, they would suddenly say that they want to join the student council, you know? Uh, I was doing a bit to lead you to the right answer. Can't believe you actually got it. Thank you very much for the help, Miyu. I appreciate it. Oh, how clever. Yeah, even Gonta understands. You can just ignore her, Gonta. Hey, don't ignore Waifu. The remaining student council members are Gonta, Kibo, Sumugi, and Himiko. Well, it can't be Himiko. She was besties with Angie. I trust their friendship. You guys do too, right? I don't think Himiko had it in her to kill, you know. Yeah, of course. Can we trust their friendship so readily? Obviously. Let's believe in them. That trims our list of suspects down to three. Gonta, Sumugi, and Kibo. Yep, yep. The culprit is one of those three people. That's too easy and you know it. You mean one of those two people. Because a robot ain't people, Jack. Eh. I will let that remark slide. <laughs> anyway, aren't these accusations just a tad too hasty? <laughs> what happens? The culprit should confess already. Gonta, Keyboy, or Samugi. 
Well? No, not Gonta. Gonta would never kill Angie. It's against gentleman protocol. Yeah, Gonta's a gentleman. You shouldn't suspect either of us. Smoothie's right. Hey, stick up for me too. I'll stick up for you, buddy. Gonta definitely not hurt anyone. Torture Gonta if you don't believe. Why the hell? No. Torture might be a bit too far, but Gonta and I aren't the culprits. And I'm not the culprit either. Jeez. Gonta, I'm not, not, the culprit. Culprit. not the culprit. Oh boy. Goody, we get to do one of these again. We must Don't consider other gentlemen. possibilities. Surely there must be suspects in the city council. Oh, council. oh. It, and you damn it, Alfred. Alfred. A dead chick can't be the culprit. Only student Watch council members had access. Oh. No, no. You, Kokichi, I can literally counter you with that. <sighs> there are several suspicious statements, but one is obviously inconsistent. I'll listen carefully, sort the statements in my head, and find the answer. Uh, we must consider other gentlemen. possibilities. <laughs> Surely there must be such outside the city council. Uh, that's utterly uh, impossible. Uh, a dead Not just anyone can open the door. Okay, I gotta cancel Kokiji. Only student council man. Ha! I heard it. Damn it, that's another V counter I missed. No, it wasn't just student council members that could have opened that lab door. Hmm. What was it you said earlier about Kyo opening the door, Shuichi? Unless you're a student council member, you can't enter Angie's lab. Right? I was referring to Keo. He couldn't have done it, but you could have. Exactly. Because I saw you open the classroom lock by picking it. Gokiji pulled out some thin needles and stuck them into the keyhole of the lock. There! Open says me. That happened? I totally forgot. Bullshit! So you're going to pretend you don't remember, huh? <laughs> Quit glaring at me like that. Of course I remember. Yeah, I did it. I killed Angie. That. Hmm. Wait, what? What did you just say? I picked the lock to her lab, snuck into the room, and then wham! Killed Angie. The culprit was me all along. Kokiji, stop. What? What What are you saying? Is this some kind of joke? Nah, no joke. I thought that if I confessed, I could atone for my sins. You're a fucking liar. And it helped. I feel so much better. Whew. Wait, so Kokiji really is culprit? No. No, he's lying. I think. Maybe? He's lying. I'm certain of it. No, no. Definitely not a lie. I killed Angie. Shouldn't you guys believe the culprit when they confess? Um, not when they're a pathological liar like you. Then let me ask you, culprit. How did you lock the room? Huh? It's the same as opening it. You pick the door closed from the outside. No, that doesn't make sense. Thank you. Huh? What does it make sense? Can't you lock a door by picking it? Maybe, but that's not how the culprit locked the room. They used a different method. What different method? Yeah, Mumbles. Use your big boy voice and explain yourself. Okay. Uh, there were two doors to the classroom, and the one locked last was... That would have to be the back door, I think. Oh, I'm sorry, I keep forgetting. That's it! Wrong confirmation button. Because the back door had a different type of the lock that can door. lock very easily. That's how they made this a locked room mystery. The back door had a sliding lock, yes. How was it locked from the outside? 
the culprit used a certain tool. The tool that the culprit used to lock the sliding from lock from the outside was Mind mine. Uh Okay. Mm. That surprisingly worked. It would have had to have been the sword, I think. Oh, hold on. Eh. How- oh! Mm. Sorry. I see it. I feel very stupid. But yeah, they had to have used it the sword the to lock it. Leaf katana that was stabbed into Kaede's effigy. The culprit used that to hit the knob of the sliding lock to lock the door. So the gold leaf was in the sliding lock because... The... Because when the katana yeah. hit the lock, some of the gold leaf rubbed off on it. The gold leaf on that katana did peel rather easily. Hmm, that evidence rings a bell. Specifically, a school bell. Was well, that a reference to Dong and Robo 1? <laughs> That doesn't matter anymore. Let's not dwell on the past. Ooh, the gold leaf landed on the sliding lock when the katana touched it. Though, how the hell they wait? Hmm. Did they spin the effigy? So that means the culprit used the katana to move the sliding lock, right? But wait, how did they move it with a katana? And from outside Angie's lab? The clue that might give us the answer is the layout of the area itself. You know what I just realized what I forgot to do? I forgot to look for the goddamn freaking Monokuma figures. Oh my god, why the hell did I didn't do that? Shit! It was an odd setup after all. The katana stabbed into the effigy. The effigies hung upside down. Angie didn't do that as part of the ritual? No. Nowhere in the Necronomicon did it say you had to hang the effigies. If it was not part of the ritual, then it must have been for a different purpose, right? A different purpose. What could that have been? The culprit somehow used the setup to lock the room. In that case, I need to know the reason behind every step of that setup. If I do that, the way the culprit locked the room should be clear. Oh! Psych taxi! Cool! Alrighty. actually oddly fun. Then again, I don't play racing games, so I'm not that good. Okay. Gotta avoid odd vehicles. Excuse me, good sir. I hope you don't mind, but I'm going to be stealing that. Thank you. I hope you don't mind. What turned the ha what turned the handle of the oh, what turned the handle of the sliding lock? Um... It have to be the, um, the the handle of the sword. I think that's how they got the gold leaf on the lock. I think effigy's hand, katana's hilt. Oh, I don't even have to move. That's the answer. Gotcha. Okay, on to phase two. Like this is actually strangely fun. <clears throat> okay, what is the second question? I wonder if these games are going to get any harder. Eh, eh. Just little taps. Little taps. Oh! Okay. Eh, eh. Ah, fuck, I 
biggest one. Damn it! I should probably not be moving this fast, but ooh well. Oh god! Yeah, that was that was that, that was not good. Okay, <clears throat> gotta control my speed a little bit. Oh, oh damn it! I was hoping that if I stayed in the middle, I'd be able to get them rather easily. But I'm not allowed to be happy. Oh fuck! What was done to make the katana turn the lock? Uh, spin the spin the effigy. No, wait, you gotta, um... No, well, let's just see what the options are. Katana was stabbed into effigy. Ah! And sliding lock was tampered with. No. To get this trick to work, you have to stab the katana into the effigy and then spin the effigy around. So I'm guessing that's what the third question has to be. Like, oh my god, that's a big one. Ooh, we got a line over here. Avoid the car. Avoid the car. Ah! Fuck! Damn it! Get out of my way! I regret nothing! How is the effigy manipulated to make the katana affect the lock? You spin it! Swinging it back and forth, making it fall. Oh, uh, spinning. Oh, we actually have three this time. Okay. I did it. That's it. The reason the culprit stuck the katana into the effigy was so that it would hit the sliding lock as the effigy spun. Effigy spun? Yeah, because, yeah. That's right. If you spun the effigy, the rope it was hanging from would twist. Then, if you let it go, the rope would unwind and the effigy would spin the other way. And of course, the katana would spin with it. That is so convoluted. So the culprit used the katana's counterspin to push the lock into place? The culprit simply needed to spin the effigy's rope, and then swiftly leave. This would cause the spinning katana to hit the sliding lock. And thus was the back door of an empty classroom locked from the inside. Hmm. Yes, that's how Angie's lab was locked. By using the effigy with the katana. A plan born from the heart of a sword traveling through the air to intercept us. Uh. Samugi, no. Hmm, but could it have moved the slide box so easily? Actually, yes, because it was very flimsy. The sliding lock was pretty loose. A little push could move it. As long as the spinning katana hit the lock, it would have slid into position. Even if the culprit failed the first couple times, they could keep trying until it locked. Which is why the culprit chose to strike at nighttime as to avoid detection. Yes, since the student council prohibited anyone from walking around at nighttime. Are you saying it's the student council's fault? Well, to be fair. I didn't say that. In any case, the culprit probably used the murder weapon for this trick. It had to have been the right length to hit the sliding lock from the effigy. The culprit couldn't find a blade long enough in my lab, so they settled for the katana. The other effigies were only hung up, so we figured it was some kind of ceremony. That way, we wouldn't notice the lock trick. But, Kokichi did say earlier that he could have picked the lock closed. I don't want to completely ignore that possibility. Right. But I can't imagine the culprit would have done all this just for a distraction. If that's the case, then Kokichi's confession earlier was actually... Seriously? 
You fucking lied again? I'm not surprised. How are you guys surprised? Cough it up, Kokichi. Oh, man. You guys got me. Okay, I'm not the culprit. You're telling the truth this time, right? I want to say I'm lying, but I'm not. Why did you say you were the culprit? Yeah, I'm very curious. Why? I wanted to lure the culprit out. Huh? If I claimed to be the culprit, then the real culprit would agree as well. You get me? And if they pressured me to confess, then that would have looked mighty suspicious. Sheesh. Darn it. It didn't go my way because Shuichi butted in on my plan. But you do realize if we would have went along with it, then everybody but the killer would have, you know, been killed? You and your fucking lies! Go sit in the corner and play with yourself! Okay, I'll start right now. Okay! Alright, so who's the asshole who set up this locked room mystery? Beato! You? I can't hold it up anymore. Ew! What's the matter? You going soft on me now? Who made the locked room mystery doesn't matter since anyone could have done it. Don't you even understand something as basic as that, you filthy cum dumpster? Dude! Cum dumpster! You don't have to repeat it. Finally! Someone finally called me a cum dumpster! Uh No! Oh my god, Miyu. What should we talk about now? Gonta getting very confused. Please, subject change now. We must focus not on the locked room, but on who entered Angie's lab. Only one of the student council members or Kokichi could have gained entry. Therefore, the culprit must be among their number. That leaves us with four suspects. Sumugi, Gonta, Kibo, and Kokichi. Don't forget Himiko. She's also a part of the student council. Doesn't matter if she was besties with Angie, she's still a suspect. That contradicts what you said earlier, which I can prove using my recording function. It's fine. That's just a waste of time. Me? A suspect? I... Never kill Angie! So, calling all suspects, what should we discuss next? I want to hear everyone's opinion. What would you say to get yourself off the suspect list? I didn't do it. Why are you trying to lead the debate? You're a suspect too. Silence, outsider. Only the suspect rangers are allowed to speak. So suspect rangers, what? S suspect rangers? Any relation to the prism rangers? I agree. Those under suspicion should explain themselves thoroughly. We might catch them with their pants down. Anyway, I want to ask the suspect rangers. What should we talk about? What should we say to get ourselves off the suspect list? Uh... Well, guys, I want to hear what you think. Um, that's sort of a difficult question, you know? Gonta not smart enough to know answer to that. Plus, I, I swear, I'm not trying to question your intelligence, Gonta. I swear. I, I don't think you have it in you to kill somebody. Yes, it is difficult to formulate a logical response to that question. Not articulate with words, huh? Don't you guys want to prove your innocence? They don't trust you one bit, and I don't blame them. You're probably plotting... Why did Tinko have to die? Huh? Huh? I want to know what happened to Angie, too, but... Can we talk about Tanko's case now and not just Angie? <laughs> I got you exactly where I wanted, Himiko. What? Um, what do you mean? The two victims could have been killed by two separate murderers, you know. So we need to find the first Blackened responsible for the first victim. We gotta figure out who killed Angie. Until we solve Angie's case, Tenko's case is meaningless. This is gonna be a long one, because we're solving two cases this time. Did you suggest that to waste our- It's not meaningless! Himiko's right, it's not meaningless. 
Himiko. Tenko's death was meaningless. How dare you! I only got to see you be more emotional, and I'm glad, but it, under the circumstances, I'm sorry. Poor Tenko. How could you do this to her? H Himiko. Himiko, stop it with your crappy lies. Lies? Everything you said is total BS. You didn't give two shits about Tenko when she was alive. But now you're like, oh no, poor Tenko, after she's dead. Come on, really? Kokichi, enough! Thank you, Gonta. No, it's okay. It's no surprise he'd think that. I know I ignored Tenko before. That's why I'm so upset now. I should have faced Tenko. Work things out with her while she was still alive. But now, it's too late. I can't complain to her or thank her. It's too late. Yeah, seriously. It's way too late to realize that now. Our only option is to face her death head on. Hmm. Face her death? Himiko? I understand what you're going through. So I'm gonna help you out. Let's work together to find the truth. I'm not gonna let anyone say her death didn't matter. Thank you, Kaito. Thank you. K Kaito. All right. I'll put a silencing curse on whoever calls Tango's death meaningless. I I'll, I'll go get whatever you know ingredients you wanted you know to you know make that curse possible. The name of the curse is. That works too! I am. Um, suppose being dead would silence someone pretty good. She's thinking out she's she's thinking ahead. She's doing a good job. Listen up! All you guys are gonna help out too. Abandoning someone who died and only thinking about your own survival. That's just as bad as a hit and run! I won't forgive something so messed up! Tenko was our friend. Going to wanna know why she died too! Thank you! told you that's so unnecessary we're getting sidetracked here i mean don't get me wrong i can kind of understand where you're coming from kokichi we gotta tackle this one at a time but you kind of worded yourself really badly dude no even if it was a different culprit we need to know how tenko died if we don't find out who killed her we won't be able to work together not now not ever even if this trial isn't for her in order for us to survive we need to get to the bottom of Tenko's death. Not just to survive this trial, but so we can keep going and live on! Thank you. Kaito. Finally, you noticed. Jeez, you're so slow. Huh? Did Kokichi want us to notice? Don't listen to his crap. We haven't decided whether there were two different culprits yet. True. Let us talk about Tenko's case then. Perhaps that will provide us a clue. Thank you. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. They're not wrong, but I don't mind going over Tenko's case. But that was an abrupt change of topic. Was that intentional? So what do we talk about first? For now, let's see if we can narrow down the list of suspects. Okay. Tancrotch probably got killed during the seance, so everyone there's suspicious. You even have a name for Tenko? Tancrotch! <laughs> sorry. I'm sorry. I really shouldn't be laughing at a, at, a, at a good character's death. The people who attended the seance. The people who attended the seance. They were me, um, Korkiyu, me, Himiko, and... Yeah. That's it! These are four of us. It was me, Kyo, Himiko, and Kokichi. So those four are the culprits! Shit! Oh, Himiko's still culprit? <laughs> well, that's probably just a coinky dink. The most suspicious out of the four is really... You! Kyo! He suggested the whole seance idea. The... Hmm. You... Hmm. You, uh, you actually bring up a valid point. True, I may have suggested it, 
But I explained the procedure beforehand, yes? If we all knew of it before the murder, then we are all equally suspicious. Well, I suppose, but... In addition, the seance wasn't entirely in my control, either. I was not the one who selected the room we performed it in. It was Himiko. However, there are three empty rooms. Which one shall we use? Um, the middle room. The middle room's always best for stuff like this. Very well. I shall begin the preparations at once. Oh, right. But I'm still not gonna accuse Tank. I'm not gonna accuse Himiko of killing Tanko, okay? I'm not. Unless the game tells me otherwise, uh, Himiko, I swear I'm not suspecting you, okay? Also, we should not limit our suspects to only those who participated in the seance. The empty room had a point of entry from outside, you see. You mean that hole in the corner? A point of entry from outside. He must be referring to... Oh, um, here. There was, a, there was a hole here, I think. Is it there? I don't know what you're talking about. You were able to go outside from the investigation area. Oh, no! What? There was a hole there! Wasn't there? Wait, what the... The thing changes. There! Oh! You're talking about under the floor, right? I was right on it! Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry that I was not in the correct freaking pixel. Huh? Under the floor? Yes, there's a crawl space under the floor a person can move through. There was also a hole that connected it to the neighboring room. If the culprit used the hole, they could have entered and exited the seance room. If we consider that possibility, then there is another suspect. Another suspect? Who? <laughs> it's appearing before me. Oh, I can see it clearly. The true identity of Tenko's killer. Okay. Oh boy. Okay. The culprit sneaked in during the seance by crawling under the floor. But it was pitch black during the seance. Right. How could they even see if they were under the floor? Because it wasn't dark under the floor. You see, our villain had a light. Light? You mean candle? I mean Kibo's flashlight function. Huh? Now hold on a second. Wait, you're accusing Kibo now? Kibo could have used that function to get under the floor and sneak into the empty room during the seance. I said, hold on a second. He used his robot functions to commit the murders. Hold on a second. Let him talk. God. It's true that with a little light, you could move around under the floor. But is that possible? The culprit sneaked in during the seance by crawling under the floor. I was in the corner of the room, so there is space under the floor so you can see what was dropped there. What was the... But it was pitch black during the seance. How could they even see if they were under the floor? Because it wasn't dark under the floor. You see, our villain had a light. Light? You mean candle? I mean, Kibo's flashlight function. Huh? Now hold on a second. Kibo could have used that function to get under the floor and sneak into the empty room during the seance. I said hold on a second. He used his robot functions to commit the murders. Hold on a second. <laughs> I don't think so because the hole is not that big. By crawling under oh, at least that hole in the corner isn't. But it was pitch black during the seance. How could they even see if they were under the floor? Because it wasn't dark under the floor. 
You see. Oh, super. Got it. That's wrong. I don't think the culprit could have used a light while under the floor. There was a hole in the corner of the room. In other words, we would have been able to see it. If a light were used, it would have leaked through and we would have seen it. There's nothing covering that hole, dude. But when we did the seance, the room was definitely pitch black. So a light was not shined under the floor, which means you cannot claim I am the culprit. Jeez. Here I thought this would be the case where the murder could only be done by a robot. You really want to kill Kibo, don't you? You have accused me of being the culprit more than once now simply because I am a robot. And that's robophobic. My status as a robot does not mean I am capable of performing superhuman feats. My vision is somewhat poor, and I only possess average physical strength and intelligence. All right, all right, you made your point. God, now I feel sort of bad for you. No, you don't. I neither want nor need your pity. Good on you. Enough with the flashlight. It's way too bright. Yeah, I thought my game crashed for a second. <laughs> it would have been difficult to move around under the floor in that pitch black darkness. Maybe the floor and the hole have nothing to do with this case. Then why was floorboard under Tango lined up funny? Because somebody was underneath the floor. Going to think that was so culprit could stab Tanko from under floor. Ooh, nice observation, Gonta. Are you finally getting used to the class trials? Hey, Gonta's trying his best, okay? Uh huh. Thank you. <laughs> Don't say it like that. You're better off not being used to this kind of stuff. True, but he's trying. Maybe they marked Tanko with glowing paint and looked for that. This is not Danganronpa 2! That'd let the culprit find her. Then they could stab her through the floorboards. Okay, blue hair, gender bent, thinner, terror, terror. Boy, that sounds really familiar too! <laughs> but I'm just gonna ignore it. <laughs> you. You, you just. You just caught Never mind. The corpse didn't have any trace of glowing paint, though. Oh, yeah. So then why was that floorboard loose? The loose floorboard was the one under Tenko, right? If the culprit used it while she was still alive, she'd totally notice. Who fucking cares? Fussing over that won't get us closer to the culprit! We shouldn't dismiss this line of inquiry, however. Instead of butting our heads against this, how about we concentrate on another issue? What other issue? Perhaps first, we should figure out how and when exactly Tenko was killed. When? So not during seance? Tenko was in the metal cage for the whole seance, wasn't she? How could someone have gotten to her there? Maybe the culprit killed her before she went under the metal cage. Mm, no. That's not possible. She was alive at that point. And she was talking to us too. This is the point of no return, Tenko. After this point, you mustn't speak. <clears throat> the next time you open your mouth, it will be Angie speaking through you. Understood. I will not say a word until the seance is over. Yes. She was unmistakably alive when the seance began. That was right before we blew out the candles. But when the light came back... The floorboard was removed at that point, so it's likely she was already dead then. So she was killed when the room was dark? But she was inside Cage, right? Going to think it impossible to kill her then. But she wasn't killed when the room was dark. It was a different time. A different time? How the fuck should I know? You figure it out, shitheads. Well... She was underneath the, uh, you know, the white, um, blanket, so maybe before the lights went out, that's when it happened. Huh? Since Gonta said it was impossible, I'm proposing an alternate theory. Okay. Now hurry up and think! If you 
You want to make my golden brain tingle? Start circle jerking your lipstick brains! Ah. Uh, no. When Tenko got killed, it wasn't during the seance. It could not have been done at any other time. Yes, I could have. She was under the cage the whole time. And she was dead when the cage was lifted. Come on, Miyu. What about moment cage was lifted? <sighs> like that. Uh, when cage lifted, culprit stabbed Tango real fast. So fast, no one saw. <laughs> oh, my. I... Uh, Mew. So who lifted the cage? Uh, it was me. <laughs> me. Then obviously me you. who is the culprit. There's no to the down. I. I'm. Uh. Oh, for God's sake, Mew. Tanko not being killed during the sales. That might be impossible, but there's e no evidence for it. When Tanko got but killed, might not be impossible. Sorry. It wasn't during the seance. Hmm. It could not have been done at any other time. She was under the cage the whole time, <coughs> and she was dead when the cage was lifted. <laughs> what about moment cage was lifted? <sighs> like that. Uh, culprit stab tangle real fast. Let's skip that so we don't hear her going through those de oh, the weird noises she was making. Let's skip that. Cause I think I need to cancel out I guess I think I think I think I need to cancel out um uh Gonta. Cause I think what he cause it's something that he said. When Tanko got killed, it wasn't during the seance. Not to mention, it seems like the white blanket is like the only thing that would work. She was under the cage the whole time. Because my theory is, like, she was probably killed before the seance actually occurred. What about moment cage was lifted? I missed. Damn it! Damn it! I missed. Fuck. Okay, I'm gonna have to go back again. I was trying to get the friggin' V counter, but I failed. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> friggin' chipmunk to me was hilarious to me. I'm sorry. It could not have been done at any other time. She was under the cage the whole time. And she was dead when the cage was lifted. Okay. What about moment cage was lifted? Yes! That's wrong! Thank goodness I got it! We had to go with No. Yeah. It wasn't possible to kill her the moment the cage was lifted. Because the inside of the white cloth had Tenko's blood on it. Oh, that slipped my mind. I was just. Okay. That clock was removed before the cage was lifted. If Tenko was stabbed then, there wouldn't be blood on the clock. What? But how could my golden brain be wrong when it felt so, so right? The only possibility is that Tenko was killed during the sale. I got your remodel right here! God, that scared me! <sighs> no. It's still wrong to think that Tenko was killed during the seance. What? I'm gonna prove it right now. My golden brain is gonna go all out! Okay, I guess I'm getting into a sword fight with my game girlfriend, not count not cheating on Kaede, I swear. Tenko died after the seance. It happened when the sheet was lifted. That was the moment the culprit chose to stab the fuck out of Tanko through the cage! They stuck the thin blade through the gaps of- And that clean white sheet got stained blood red! But the weapon was a sickle. 
Only the blade could have fit through the gaps. The blade's all you need. If you stick the blade through a gap in the cage, it'd be long enough to reach Tenko. Sitting in there with her neck all exposed. She no. wasn't that far from the cage's gaps. In which case, the person who lifted the sheet is the culprit, and that's none other than Keo. There has to be a hole in Miu's logic somewhere. All I have to do is show the evidence that will counter Miu's claim. The blade's all you need. If you stick the blade through a gap in the cage, it'd be long enough to reach Tenko. Sitting in there with her neck all exposed. Hey! I'll cut through your words. Wait, did I beat counter and I didn't even aim for it? wasn't sitting down inside the cage no she was actually like on her knees and everything she wasn't sitting she was like making her she was turtling up she was bent over with her forehead against the marker stone and the cage itself was about three feet tall the sickle's blade was too short to reach Tenko while she was in that position then I messed up again how could this happen? I am so embarrassed. Hey, don't worry about it. There's always next time. No worries, Mew. Everyone already knows you're an embarrassment to the human race. Fuck off, Kokichi. Yeah, no worries. Gota! Ah! Oh, so embarrassing! If Shuichi is right, then it's impossible for Tenko to have been killed through the cage. She couldn't have been killed during the seance since she was in the cage, right? If she was killed then, the cloth over the cage would have been pierced. Not during the seance, or from below the floor. Then it's impossible, isn't it? Not really. Yeah, for a living person. Huh? <laughs> what if Angie's spirit killed Tenko? Kokichi, no! What are you talking about? Th th that's not possible! We don't know that. Some things are impossible for a human, but not for a spirit. Don't say stupid stuff like that! S screw spirits! Stop that now. Seriously, you're just doing that to really fuck with Kaito, okay? So stop it. You're being mean. Angie's spirit killed Tinko? But why? Himiko? Why would Angie's spirit kill Tinko? What if Tenko killed Angie, and then Angie's spirit came back for revenge? Like I said, that's impossible! Spirits can't be culprits! <laughs> then explain how the culprit killed Tenko under these impossible circumstances. Well, uh... See? You can't explain, can you? Only a spirit could have done that! Wait! I know! What if the culprit was hiding inside the cage? What? If they were in there, they could have stabbed Tenko during the seance. No. If there was someone else in the cage, we would have I noticed. I agree with Kaito. The culprit could have been inside the cage. What? You do? Nonsense. There was no space in the cage for the culprit to hide. Maybe the culprit wouldn't need to hide in the first place. What? Also, the culprit could have killed her in the cage at any time. I think you know what I'm getting at, right? The they she's referring to. Wait. You're not really thinking that... You don't think she actually committed suicide, do you? Let's see. Is that what you're suggesting? Are you serious? I believe Maki is referring to Tenko herself. What did you say? Are you saying Tenko was the culprit? She committed suicide. T suicide? 
if she committed suicide, it would explain a lot of things we couldn't figure out. She volunteered to be in the cage, and then stabbed herself during the seance. Then how do you explain the sickle getting all to the way to the further end? It wouldn't matter how dark the room was. But the sickle she was stabbed with was under the floor, right? If Tanko had stabbed herself, wouldn't the sickle still be inside the cage? What if she was still alive for a moment? Uh, oh my god. Mew actually said something smart. <laughs> Perhaps that explains why the floorboard was removed. After stabbing herself with the sickle, she threw it underneath the floor. So she took off the floorboard to get rid of the sickle? And then she died before she could move the... Hmm. Yes. That makes sense to Gonta. I... Well, it doesn't make sense to me. There's no reason for Tanko to commit suicide. Maybe I wasn't too far off with the theory I had earlier. What do you, you mean? Know, about Tenko killing Angie? Yeah? <sighs> because Tenko and Angie were fighting for your attention, right? Hey, Angie, why? when did you brainwash Himiko? Tenko's pent-up frustration led her to commit such an atrocity. Her conscience couldn't handle it anymore. So she decided to end her own life. What? But if she was going to kill herself, why do it during the seance? She wanted to hide the truth of her suicide. Really? Why? If it is suicide, she would probably be, be you know, ashamed. There could only be one reason to hide it in the killing game, right? It's to take us down with her. Okay, Kokiji, no. Take us down? I will not ever think that Tenko would do something like that. She wanted us to pick the wrong answer during the class trial. So she could bring us all down. She wanted us to die with her. Okay, well, she probably just wanted Himiko to die with her. But still. But what are you saying? Tenko was it like that? I ship it. He told me. Keep your chin up and live life facing forward. Survive with me and everyone else. What if all of that was just a lie? Yeah, you'd certainly know about lies, wouldn't you? A lie? Wait! We should believe Tenko's last words. I... I don't think Tenko would have it in her to lie to Himiko of all people. The true terror of class trials is that you shouldn't believe everything said. Himiko, you said that Tenko would never do anything like that. But how can you be so sure? Did you guys actually know each other? People keep all sorts of secrets. Like Maki. She hid the fact that she's a cold-blooded killer. Is it wise of us to trust other people wholeheartedly in this kind of situation? You're speaking of trust when all you do is lie. Jeez, you're such a naive dude. Naive? We're all just people, you know? Of course we're gonna have some secrets. What matters is whether there's any malice behind them. Hmm. People can lie about how malicious their hidden secrets really are. Well, duh. It's impossible to know for sure what others are thinking. That's why it all comes down to whether or not you believe in yourself. Believe in the me that believes in you. If you get betrayed, it's not their fault. It's your fault for believing in them. That's why I believed in Maki Roll, because I wanted to believe in her. Oh, for God's sake, why did you tell, tell, oh God, you fucking told her about my name. Just because you're acting all cool doesn't mean you get to skip training. <laughs> oh my hey, God. Come on. You think you're being a little too strict? You two are way too cute together. Well, we come from different backgrounds. So for now, let's agree to disagree. No one's ever called me naive before. And from Kaito? Seriously? Yeah, <laughs> must be a first for you, dude. Whether or not I believe, my heart can't reach Tinko anymore. But I want to believe in her. She wouldn't commit suicide. She wouldn't try to take us down. That's what I want to believe. 
I'll believe you right two. with you, Himiko. Gonta, no can believe Tenko commits suicide. But if Tenko did commit suicide, then I would answer all of our questions. If you insist we believe in Tenko, then provide a reason to do so. A proper reason. All right, I'll give you a reason. Is there a reason? Yes, there is. Will you trust me, Maki? If it turns out I'm wrong, you can blame me all you like. But for now, I need you to trust in my detective work. There we go. There's some good confidence brimming there. I don't believe Tenko would kill herself because of what she said. Okay, everyone. I'll see you guys after the seance. She said see you guys after. I doubt she had a sudden change of heart. Just because we don't know how she was killed doesn't mean that it was suicide. We shouldn't be satisfied with that. And if we keep thinking, we'll find the truth. And that means we have to believe in Tenko. I'll make them all believe. Good job. I like seeing some confident Shuichi. So hmm. far, suicide seems to be the best explanation. Her plan was to take us down with her. So she hid her true intentions. Tenko's not that kind of person! But if Tenko did commit suicide, it would explain how she died during the sands. She could have secretly brought the sicker and then stabbed herself with it! Finally, with the last of her strength, she threw the sickle underneath the floor. All the pieces fit. Everyone thinks that Tenko committed suicide, but only because they're latching onto the easiest answer. To get out of this, I need to make them think their suicide theory wouldn't work. So far, suicide seems to be the best explanation. <gasps> Wait! Is this her the music? Plan was to take us down with her. I think this is the music. So she hid her true intentions. Okay, um... Tenko died in the crash position. I ran back on it was deep. Probably not enough to kill her. Anymore. Tenko's not that kind of person! But if Tenko did commit suicide, it would explain how she died during the sands. She could have secretly. Okay, judging by the truth bullets I have, I think if I'm going to lie. I may have to use Tenko's bolt. Finally, with the last of her strength, she threw the sickle underneath the floor. All the pieces fit. I think... Yeah, this is the lying theme. So okay. Far, suicide seems to be the best explanation. I hope I'm right. Her plan was to take us down with her. So she hid her true intentions. Don't worry, Himiko, I believe you. Tenko did commit suicide. It would explain how she died during the sands. She could have secretly brought the sickle and then stabbed herself with it. Finally, with the last of her strength. Yes! I'll reveal the truth. Okay, okay. Tenko couldn't have thrown the sickle under the floor. Let it be known that I spent an entire workday listening to the perjury theme, okay? So, I'm glad that I think I've got it memorized, okay? Because she died instantly. Instantly? Her death might not have been instant, but she couldn't have gone far before she bled out. I'm certain of it. My investigation determined that she died instantly. What's your opinion, Maki? I'd like to hear from someone who specializes in murder. Please lie with me, Maki. Maki. You're right. I completely forgot about that important detail. Yes! Tenko died instantly. Thank you! What? As an assassin, I specialize in killing my targets swiftly. Awesome! Good! We got the killer on our side! Wait. I 
have no doubt that Tenko was killed immediately. I guess I need to rephrase that because I might get some confusion. Good, I've got an assassin on my side. There we go. <laughs> Words of a true killer. Pretty sure we can believe everything she said. <laughs> Thank you, Maki. How could you forget that, Maki Roll? You better apologize to Shuichi. I'm going to rip out every one of your hairs on your head. Excuse me? It's okay, Kaito, really. No apology necessary. Anyway, Tanko died so suddenly that she couldn't have gotten rid of the sickle. Knowing that, the theory that she killed herself just doesn't fit, correct? Just like I thought. Tanko wouldn't commit suicide. Thank goodness, Himiko. Which means someone definitely killed Tenko during the seance. Her suicide was considered because we could not determine how she was killed. Oh god, I think I broke my neck! No! There must have been a way! We're gonna figure it out! Did any of the participants witness anything peculiar during the seance? There was a crashing noise. If you know something, please speak up. It could be the key to solving this mystery. Not a bad idea. We should remember what happened at the seance. Let me try to remember. I'm sure there's something. I need some kind of clue that will help me solve this mystery. Aha! Sound during the seance. That has to be the bullet. There is something that bothers me. The fact that the seance failed. The ritual was perfect and yet it failed. Not really, it wasn't. Really strange. Now that I think about it, while we were all singing the song, I heard something fall. I'm more concerned about how dark it got in there. I mean, it was totally pitch black. My job was to relight the candles. Moving along the walls was seriously tough. It was pitch black during the seance. That limits what could have happened. But stay calm. Think. There must be some kind of clue. Did anything seem out of the ordinary during the seance? There is something that bothers me. I think I have to agree with Hini. The ritual was perfect and yet it failed. How utterly strange. Now that I think about it, while we were all singing the song, I heard something fall. Yes! I agree! Okay, okay, okay. Just gotta keep this up. We gotta lay off the mistakes. Himiko, you think that something fell because of that sound you heard, right? Yeah, there's a banging noise. It sounded like something heavy fell down and hit the floor really hard. Question is, the hell was it? It could have fallen down. Fallen down? There wasn't anything on the ceiling that could have fallen down, right? Am I wrong? I thought something fell, but... Maybe the loose floorboard? The sound was pretty loud. It did seem like something hit the floorboards. Hmm. A loud sound. Like something hit the floorboards. Maybe that sound had something to do with the other thing that happened in the dark. Uh... Bloody Kokichi! The loose floorboard right below Tenko is not loose before the seance. There was dried blood on the bottom part of it. Is that it? This is it! Okay, it is it. Okay, good, good. Okay. I think the floorboard coming off had something to do with that sound. That floorboard came loose at some point during the seance, right? Floorboard has made such a loud sound, though. I imagine it was the sound of an intense impact. If the impact was that intense, then it could have loosened the floorboard. 
That is true. There would have had to be a strong impact to make that sound. But what was it? What could it possibly do? All right, then. Let's go with that. We all gotta put our heads together now. Okay. So what made the floorboard come loose? Judging from the sound, there must have been considerable force. Someone who participated in the seance. Maybe that person tore off the floorboard. That wouldn't make such a loud crashing sound. Maybe the wooden statue fell over. But that statue was still on top of the cage. Culprit hide under floor. Then stood up with such might. <laughs> but we already said there was no one under the floor. Someone must have stomped through the floorboard. A floorboard that comes loose when you step on it is dangerous. God, it's like I'm the only one here who's staying on the ball. You hardly have any experience with balls to say that, Mew. Ah! Don't be stupid. Don't you know me and balls are the best of friends? <laughs> Why are you so proud of that? Okay, okay. What would have made that crash on Oh, sorry. What would have made a strong enough impact to knock this floorboard loose? If I think about everyone's testimonies and combine it with the facts... So what made the floorboard come loose? Judging from the sound, there must have been considerable force. Someone who participated in the seance. Maybe that person tore off the That was the one with the cut segment off, right? That wouldn't make such a loud crashing sound. Maybe that's what it was. Maybe the wooden statue fell over. But that statue was Wait, still on top of the cage. Under the floor, so. Culprit hide under floor. Then stood up with such might. But we already said there was no one under the floor. Someone must have stomped through the floorboard. How the hell do you pull that off? When you step on it is dangerous. God, it's like I'm the only one here who's staying on the ball. You hardly have any experience with balls to say that, Mew. D don't be stupid. Don't you know me and balls are the best of friends? Why would I be able to agree with that? Hmm. You know what? I'm gonna just throw caution to the wind. For some reason, they're having that one that Kokichi is doing spinning that rapidly. I think that's the one I have to agree with. Also, he did say he hurt himself too. So what made the floorboard come loose? Judging from the sound, due to a loose floorboard, I believe. Force. Someone who participated in the sound. So I think I have to agree with Maybe Kokichi. That, person off the floorboard. that wouldn't make such a loud crashing sound. Maybe the wooden statue fell over. But that statue was still on top of the cage. Culprit hide under floor. Then stood up with such might. But we already said there was no one under the floor. Someone must have stomped through the floorboard. Eh. I agree. Hey, I was right. Okay, okay. Shit, we're already an hour in, God. Kokichi is right. The floorboard came loose because someone stomped on it. But floorboards fit perfect. Go to make sure first time we go to empty room. When we first saw the room, yes. But when I looked again during the investigation... Some segments were cut out. One of the cross pieces supporting the floorboards was cut off. After examining the cut, I concluded that it must have been done deliberately. Someone? You mean the culprit, right? Why'd they do that? What did the culprit stand to gain by cutting the cross piece? What did they stand to gain? That's the question. To solve this case, I'll need to think carefully about the cross piece and floorboard. Tenko's body was at one end of the loose floorboard, and the cross piece that had been cut was on the other end of the floorboard. The unsupported part was outside the cage, so it could have been stomped on. Only one of the cross pieces were cut, was cut. The other two were intact. 
One of them was right under Tenko, and the other was in the center, right about where the edge of the cage was. Hmm. And what was the culprit attempting to achieve by stomping on the floorboard? Think. Come on, think. Oh! Shit! Hangman's Gambit. Oh, this is a big one. Uh... What happened when the loose floorboard was stepped on? Saw effect. Oh, shit. Sorry. I forgot how to English for a second. A seesaw effect. Oh my god, it was. Oh god, I feel stupid. Where's a T? Give me a T. Give me a T. Can you give me a T? I'm asking kind. I'm asking you nicely. Ah. A seesaw effect. That's right. The floorboard might have been used as a seesaw. But what would that accomplish? A seesaw? The cross piece at one end of the floorboard had been cut off. The other two cross pieces holding up that board were close to the cage. Meaning, if you were to apply force to the end of the floorboard with no cross piece. Oh. The next cross piece would act as a fulcrum to turn the floorboard into a lever. Oh! That means the murder weapon was inside the cage. A lever capable of lifting up Tenko's entire body. Her whole body lifted up? Yeah, that sounds like a seesaw, all right. But why bother lifting Tenko's body? To get the back of her neck to hit the murder weapon. They couldn't have killed Tenko like that, unless they used the sickle. That's exactly it. Using the seesaw trick, it was possible to kill Tenko with a sickle. Huh? How? In order for the culprit to kill Tenko with a seesaw trick, the placement of the sickle is the most important factor. The floorboard seesaw, the cage, and the blood on the white fabric. What conclusions can I draw from this? There's only one place the sickle could have been that is consistent with the evidence. It is... Top of the cage. That's it! The sickle was at the top of the iron cage, with the blade facing down. The reason we didn't see it was because of the fabric covering the cage. Oh. Also, the wooden statue kept the blade in place. It's true that the sickle's handle was thick, which made the statue wobble. But the statue's weight kept it from falling over. 
Once everything was in place, if you step hard enough on the seesaw, she would be flung back and her she would be pierced immediately. Tenko's body would have shot upward and hit the blade on the top of the cage. She was bent over, meaning the sickle's blade would have connected with her neck. The six-inch sickle blade wasn't long enough to stab Tenko in her crouch position, but with the floorboard acting as a seesaw, it could compensate for the blade's length. Bringing the victim to the sickle rather than bringing the sickle to the victim. That's definitely an unorthodox idea. Uh, yeah, I don't think I've ever seen a, a seesaw method to kill, used to kill somebody. <sighs> it's crazy, but it would explain how Tenko got stabbed while she was in the cage. So, she did not commit suicide. So the sound we heard was the culprit stomping on the floorboard. That impact make floorboard come loose. Looks like we got ourselves a good old-fashioned seesaw homicide. Wait, what the hell's a seesaw homicide? That's fucking crazy! I know, right? The craziness is what really makes the killing game fun, you know? It's not fun, Kokichi. They can't get away with murder the normal way, so they gotta think outside the box. I mean, you're not wrong. Kudos, culprit. You did a great job keeping me entertained. Culprit, you should really feel sick to your stomach that you entertained Kokichi. Indeed. Well played, Himiko. What? Huh? huh? <laughs> it was you, wasn't it? The one behind the seesaw homicide. What? Huh? Why her? Why would you suddenly accuse her? Because she's the only one capable of carrying out this plan. How? The only one? Why is that? Because this seesaw homicide required its location to be prepared beforehand. By cutting the cross piece beneath the floorboard, you mean? Then the culprit would need to lure their victim into the prepared room. That is why you chose that room for the seance. Is it not, Himiko? Well, I mean, to be fair, you don't even know if, like, the other rooms were trapped or rigged or not. Trapped, rigged, the same thing. However, there are three empty rooms. Which one shall we use? Um, the middle, the middle room. The middle room's always best for stuff like this. Oh yeah, Himiko was the one who chose the site for the seance. I didn't get a chance to check the other rooms. They might be rigged the same way. She likely found out about my plans for the seance somehow. You were quite vocal about the seance, Kyo. You even had instructions for it in your lab. Our culprit, Himiko, prepared her seesaw trap ahead of time. Then she waited for me to host the seance and suggested the middle room. She led us all into holding the seance right where she wanted it. Then she killed Tenko, all according to plan. I'm sorry, Kyo. I'm not going to assume Himiko would do that. That's a lie, right? Himiko did such a thing? Because, like I said, what about the other rooms that we didn't get a chance to investigate? Himiko, who Tenko cherished and loved, tragically killed her. Wait! We don't know that, right? Thank you. He's wrong, right, Himiko? Himiko would never kill Tenko, right? Tinko? I killed Tinko? Himiko? What's wrong, Himiko? It is true that using the middle room was Himiko's idea. But does that really mean he that does that really mean that Himiko really killed Tenko? Would something like that really happen? Something so cruel. Shit. Okay, intermission. Kind of a dick move to end there, but okay.